All right, so we're going to kind of do like an exercise in the class today. Um, but before that, we'll talk a little bit about what we're going to do. Um, but before that, uh, as you can see, some question marks here. Um, originally, I was going to talk about COVID, and, uh, and so I'm going to talk about that a little bit. But I found it very depressing, so I stopped wanting to talk about it. So instead, uh, I have a bunch of stuff about bikes. Um, so hopefully no one's disappointed. Uh, but I was going to show a little bit about one example, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, so uh, just kind of getting to it. Uh, project two uh, should be complete, right? It was due before class today. Um, so uh, if you didn't get it in, uh, I think there is a little bit of buffer if it's late. So just make sure it's in very soon. Is everybody else, has everyone submitted it already? Yeah, all right, cool. Uh, of course, this uh, application's still up. Um, I thought I had another announcement, now I can't remember what it was. Uh, we don't have class on Thursday, in case anybody wasn't aware. Um, I believe the entire school is shut down Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, which is fun for my other laptop, it means I can't drop it off at IT, which is annoying. Um, Let's see, was there anything else? I don't think so. All right, so by way of example, let's see, do I have anything else here? No. Um, I wanted to point out uh, this kind of interesting article, um, which I will have to agree to cookies first. Um, and, you know, this is kind of just another example. And so this is specifically about COVID. Um, I'm going to try to have uh, two copies open so I can kind of uh, read it and and show you it at the same time. Um, but basically, what I wanted to point out is that this is another one of those examples of where if you don't kind of read the fine print, uh, it's it can be confusing when people when you see headlines. Okay, and so the headline was I thought in big bold letters somewhere, but oh here we go. So. It's not in very big bold letters, but it's kind of buried in the text here. Um, but see right here, it says half of those who died from the virus were vaccinated. All right. Does anybody have any uh, quick theories as to why that's a little bit disingenuous? So this is one of those headlines. Technically, it's true. Okay. But it implies something that is not necessarily true. So if you're not sure like how you would resolve this, but does anybody see here what might be implied? Like what do you what's what do you read between the lines in that headline? The part I have highlighted, not the big text. Yeah. Right. It it basically it's implying, right, that uh 50% of the people who get vaccinated, uh, what does it say, die or sick? Yeah, died anyway, right? So from previous lectures, right, we've looked occasionally at the efficacy rate and stuff like that. Like, we know that doesn't sound right, right? And what's interesting about this is because it is technically accurate, because if you look at the example they give in this article, which I thought was kind of cool, and I'll, I'll share the link out if you want to read it uh, for real, um, so imagine a population of 60 people. Okay, and that's what we have for a bunch of blue dots there. Um, and then imagine 10 of those people die, okay, from COVID. And five of them were vaccinated and five of them were not vaccinated. So half of them died, right? Except if you kind of continue on the, and actually kind of think about it a little bit more deeply, why is it not necessarily a good implication? Oh boy, that's growing. Uh, is imagine that in our 60, 50 of them were vaccinated and 20 or 10 of them were not vaccinated, right? So another way of putting this headline is half the unvaccinated people died and whatever that is, one fifth, right? One fifth. Uh, no, yeah, I don't know. Uh, one fifth of, of the people who were vaccinated died, right? That's a very different kind of statement. Does that make sense? 
So what it's not showing you is that the whole population and what we're talking about is this group in here that oh, this, this, this way, right? um, that died from COVID, but it clearly helps to be vaccinated, right? Because all these other people did not. There is some level of natural immunity, okay? Which we knew in advance, right? I mean, you know, uh, diseases rarely do, don't usually do very well if they kill everybody they come into contact with, right? This is one of the reasons that up until, I don't know, whatever it was, like five or 10 years ago, something like that, Ebola had never spread very far, right? Because Ebola has this nasty habit of, it kills you immediately before you get a chance to spread it, which is actually not very good for a virus in a sense. But COVID isn't like that. And this is one of the things where um, Delta, I think it's Delta, is less likely to kill you, but more likely to infect you. So it's going to do an even better job of kind of going through the population, right? That's, yeah, that's typically the progression of, of the way it works, is that viruses evolve to be more transmissible. Right. Yeah. Um, they Usually there's a trade-off. So when they evolve, get more transmissible, they usually get weaker or less likely to kill people because one of the ways you it's hard to transmit things is when you're dead. Um, so I just thought this was an interesting uh, kind of article about you know how things can be portrayed with a headline uh, that, like I said, technically it's true, but it gives uh, the wrong impression from the you know kind of the implied information. Does that make sense? All right, so I don't know if there's anything else I want to talk about there, but I mean, that's the, the bulk of it. Um, obviously, there's text that is useful to read, uh, but we're not going to do that today. Um, so instead, we're going to talk about some bikes. Um, actually, I should have left this over in your folder because it'd be easier. So, oh, this also is. Um, let me just throw around. So down in lecture 22 is where we are. Um, actually, we don't get any more details here. Oh, I thought it gave us more details. Um, well, that's annoying. Uh, so let me see if there's a properties or something. All right, let me just move this so I can read it. All right, well, it doesn't seem to show it to you at all, uh, or at least not that I can quickly find and not bore you to tears. Um, so what I want to point out is that, and now I have to actually get the data because I don't know what it is. Um, which, and which file is that? 23. All right, so what I want to put out here is that we have two CSV files, right? One of them is, what did it say? Uh, 8.7 megs, okay? So eh, not that big, right? The other one, that one that's called some blue bikes there is uh, 154 megs, okay? So, and the number of rows in the some blue bike bikes text uh, is 817,188. And in the other line, 2016, 03. The other one is 41,278 rows. Um, why do you think I'm pointing that out? So one is 153 
megs or 154 megs and four, uh, 817,000 rows. And the other one is uh, about 10 megs and 41,000 rows, give or take. So why am I pointing that out? Any ideas? We want to do something with this blue bikes data. Exactly. So one of these data sets is you know way, way, way bigger than the other. Um, and just by way of preparation, so to even get it down to 817,000 rows or so, uh, if what I did was I actually went and got all the blue bikes data from 2015 all the way through now and crashed it kind of all into one file, uh, which um, well, I was going to, and then I looked at it and it's about nine and a half million rows. Okay, so really, really big. Uh, so to make it a little bit more manageable, what I did was I took a bunch of the bikes. So uh, let me, actually, I'll just kind of load it to give you some context. Oops, I got a step. All right, and so there's this bike ID column here. So what I did with the some blue bikes was I said, okay, I'm just gonna grab like somewhat arbitrarily, I'm gonna pick a bunch of bike IDs and then only pull out the data with those bike IDs. So what, you know, I'm arguably doing is taking kind of a random sample of that nine and a half million row set uh, and getting it down to about, like I said, four, uh, 817,000 rows. Um, what I probably should have done was taken an even smaller set of bike IDs. Um, however, I started out with like 8,000 and then I went to 4,000 bikes and then I went to like 1,000 bikes uh, just to try to get it into that range. So there's a lot of data here um, on not a lot of bikes in the Blue Bikes program. So what I'm kind of pointing out here, so what I wanna to do today is uh, find my right cheat sheet window. Um, what I wanna to do today is see if we can discover some stuff about this data. And specifically, one of the things that I thought would be interesting, just open, well, let's, let's talk about the data set first. All right, so you already see the columns that we have here. We have and the things that we're gonna care about today are the trip duration. So basically how long was the bike you know, in use? Um, I originally thought that it actually had bike distance in here, which would have made this more interesting. The trip duration works pretty well um, you know, although you have to hope like somebody didn't ride the bike, you know, a mile and then go and have a really long lunch and then ride the bike a, a mile back. So I'm just kind of assuming for the sake of argument that the duration is reflective of use, right? So they were riding the bike for, you know, 2,317 minutes, um, you know, or thereabouts, right? Uh, so that's one thing I want to point out. And then the stop time, okay, I point out because uh, you could really use the start time or the stop time, but one of the things I want to know is when does the bike go end of life? Okay, so when does the bike stop showing up in the data? Okay, and so uh, let's see, what else? Oh, and then we have bike ID. Uh, so this is a unique identifier for each of the bikes. Um, I don't know if it's actually on the bike themselves. It probably is, but I haven't seen. And then we're just kind of ignoring the rest of the data. Okay. And so the first thing when you get kind of a new data set is, you know, as I've said, like countless times, I think, is we want to kind of try to explore the data set a little bit. So the first thing I kind of start to take a look at is, okay, what's the max trip duration? Okay. Which is kind of a crazy large number. Um, and then make a look at the minimum trip duration is 61. And then we have what's the mean of the trip duration. 
Um, and then I can't remember what else I actually looked at. Oh, uh, the total number of rows in the data set. Um, and so basically what I'm just trying to do is get a sense of the scale of our data set. Now, if you notice, right, this is only on our single month, relatively small data set. It's not on the overall data set. So this may or may not be representative of that other data set. But, you know, it's probably in the right ballpark. Um, and so we're just going to kind of use that, like I said, to, to think about the data itself. Um, so let's see how far we're going to go here. Um, so can anybody tell me how I would get a table or, yeah, a table of just bike durations, okay? But I want bike durations. I don't want kind of duration per row. Okay, so does anybody know what function you would use to make it so that I can find out the duration of kind of any given bike? Or another way of thinking about it, what's the kind of operation I need to do on the bike ID or on the on the durations really to be able to look at to essentially aggregate or look at them by bike? Any thoughts? We haven't used this me method in a while. No ideas? All right, so we would take a group by the bike ID. So what I'm gonna do is the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna throw out the rest of the columns, okay? Because even 41,000 rows is you know a fair amount of data. So in this scenario, what I'm gonna do is just grab the bike ID and the trip duration, okay? And then I'm gonna group it by bike ID but I want to actually sum the trip durations, right? Because I want to know the total amount of usage that this bike has gotten in this data set. Does that make sense? So this should give me basically number of bikes rows, and it looks like there's a uh, little uh, right around 1200 bikes um and the uh, bike ids you know you know like you can see one one through 12 for some reason six is missing um and then we add up all of the different durations that we saw in that 41,000 records and we put them together and so we know that bike 10 has been in use quite a lot more than bike nine okay one of the other things that might be interesting to explore uh, which I didn't get to, but I thought would be interesting, is does the location of bike 10 or where its start and stops are cause the fact that it gets used a lot more? You know, so are bikes more popular in Cambridge near MIT and near the financial district than they are in, you know, over near Back Bay T Station, right? So there's probably some location information there uh, that indicates why this is so high. But I didn't get into that. I think it'd be kind of an interesting question. So I take the direction of the um, uh, the group, sorry, uh, and then just for ease of use later, I also relabel that last column so that uh, it has a, a slightly better name. Um, all right, and so then, like, kind of in the exploratory space still. What I can do is like take a scatter plot of the bike IDs and the total trip durations. Um, and this is kind of interesting, right? Like the total durations actually are fairly uniform, right? But there's some pretty wild outliers here. So again, just trying to get a sense of what the, the you know, kind of the data set looks like. Um, so that we can start to think about intelligent questions. Um, all right, so if I wanted to know when the last time this bike was used in this data set, so let me know how I would get that piece of information. Anybody? 
Any thoughts? It's very similar to the one we did before, or the one I did a few minutes ago. So is that, can anybody explain in words what you would do to figure that out, even if you don't know the code? We can give a little bit of a hint. So how would we figure out when the last time we saw this bike was? So it may not be completely accurate, but you have a pretty good guess of if it's the last time we saw the bike, then theoretically the bike was taken out of service to be replaced or repaired or something, right? Like I said, explaining it in words would be all right, even if you can't write the code. Any ideas? Yeah. Right. So how would I how would I do that? So the first thing I need to do is group the bike IDs, right? And then what would be the most recent? So if I had a list of stop times for a bike ID, what, you know, kind of what function essentially would give us the most recent stop time? Right, yeah, so basically you want the one that's closest to now, right? That's the, that's the most recent one. So the way we do that is exactly like this, except with a minor difference. And remember we whacked off the other columns so we have to go back to the bikes table but we're only going to grab the stop time and the bike id and then we're going to group by the bike id and we're going to get a max um and let me just print it okay so now we know the most recent stop time for any given bike ID, at least in this data set. Um, and so one of the reasons I'm uh, messing with this data set, right, is because what I want to do is I want to go kind of write all my code first, make sure it all works and does what I think it does, um, and then come back and look at, uh, like kind of come back and look at uh, uh, the, the real data set, right, the thing that's going to take a while to run, at least I know based on, you know, even though I'll get wildly inaccurate results, I can use uh, that as kind of a template to start from. Um, all right, so then one of the things that I would do next, because you seemed fairly hesitant, right? Like about this max, as was I. Well, I mean, like I was hesitant on it because I assume max will work on a date, right? Um, but to make sure that it does, what I, I like to do, and uh, you know, I've kind of harped on this a bit before, is I always like to try to find a way to test my code. So if I look at, um, sorry, like kind of like an arbitrary bike ID, like this 864, let's say, um, I can actually just go get bikes where um, bike ID uh, R dot equal, what did I say, 864? Oops. It's equal to, right? Yeah. And so what I really need is two of these because I, like, the, the thing that I, I was trying to find was annoying, right, is I didn't really want to choose one of the top, like, Ten, but even though they're the twelve, uh, I wanted to kind of choose kind of from somewhere arbitrarily in the middle, um, and uh, so 
I have to go and actually get that stop time max. And that's a little hard to display in a Jupyter notebook. Um, so actually, so I want basically the same function, except I want this off the lifespan table, which we just created. So we just kind of, like I said, I just eyeball it to make sure my code looks right. So 2603, 31, 18, 18. Um, and then we look, oh, shoot, can't remember. Did we just say dot show, is that right? Did you get it to show us all? Yeah. Um, so then we can kind of cheat by at least in theory. Doing a find up there, but down here. And we can kind of look at this data and we see, okay, so 2603 looks right, and then 1818, right, is the highest, at least in the 26, 201603 uh, 31s. Um, and so we kind of want to scan back through the other ones, but if we notice, they actually are sorted by at least start time. So we can kind of see that, oh yeah, nothing seems to be later than that. So like I said, just a cross check, you know, not particularly valuable, just something you want to kind of take a look at to make sure you, you're doing what you think you're doing, especially before you run it against a big data set. All right, so I think I'm going to leave you here um, almost and ask a question and I'm gonna give you some time to figure it out. Okay, so y'all haven't really messed with dates much. Um, and there are some things in Python that I find like very frustrating. I think as I mentioned before, one of them is dates. Like, why are they so hard? Like, I don't understand. So I gave you a little function that's days between, okay? If you pass in a uh, like a date, okay? Like that stop time, it'll tell you the number of days um since 2015 okay and the reason i chose that is because my data set starts there so i figure that's a good kind of rule of thumb to say okay we're talking about you know the stop times or whatever measuring them in days you know we could be more accurate but days is probably sufficient um measuring in days since 2015 is probably a good you know relative marker i mean we could do 2014 but we know then there will always be 365 added on to every number, right? Which seems kind of stupid. So that's why I chose this arbitrary date. And if I was uh, writing this, you know, kind of long term or whatever, I'd pull that out into its own name, you know, and like its own variable and then be able to change it easily. But like I said, as I know the data set starts there, um, you know, the biggest argument I would make is 2014, 12, 31 might make a little bit more sense um, it, that way you don't have to worry about the time because you don't know if this is uh midnight on the first or midnight on the 31st is where that starts so sometimes i'll back it up a day or something just you know if i don't care that much to make sure i get i'm inclusive versus exclusive but this also reflects off by one errors right my my one of banes of my existence all right, so the question I'll leave you with um, is let's see where I was. Um, I would like to know, or let's put it this way I'd like to see a scatter plot of, or sorry, no, I don't. Um, a scatter plot might help you along the way, which is how I went about this. But what I would like uh, from each of you is a uh, average lifespan. Well, it's not the best word because I use lifespan, but an average lifespan uh, for any given bike. Okay. So what I want to know is if I have a bike and I put it into service, how long until it stops showing up? All right. So. Does anybody know, can anybody talk about how to do that out loud? 
and then I'm going to give you some time to kind of try to figure out how to do it. Or maybe we should just start from blank slate. And uh, I'm kind of doing this here today, um, primarily because I would like the final exam to look like a question like this. So this way we can see how difficult it really is. Do we have any questions? Yeah. I want kind of I, I more like want the answer. Okay, so I want the um, you know basically the the average amount of time a bike lives. Okay. So I was just about to get to that. So um, when you're done, could you please submit it into Gradescope? Then I can show them on the board, or we can basically all say, okay, which one of you thinks you did it right? You know, and then we can look at it, but I don't have to have you like read it to me out loud. Um, does that make sense? Okay, so so it is, and the reason we I called it ungraded because it's not, this is not a graded exercise. It's just, let's do this in class and see, how you do, um, and then we can talk through where any problems are, any problems you run into, um, and kind of go from there. Any other questions? All right, so let's do 20 minutes for now. Um, we can revisit if uh, everybody's having a really hard time. Um, and let's say, at least for now, do the whole thing against uh, the small data set. Um, and if you're done before the 20 minutes is up, run it for the big data set, all right? All right, any questions? And you know you have all those other notebooks in there already, right? You created ones for each of the lectures all the way along. So if you remember doing this in the past, you might be able to use that as an input to figuring out how to do it this time, right? So think of it as kind of you know like open books, not quite the right word these days, right? But uh, you know uh, feel free to use whatever resources that you have. All right. All right, time has started. And while you're working on that, I'm going to go get some water, but I will be right back.
Oh, sorry. So just in case it wasn't obvious, you can't just pull the mean off the data set, uh, even if you figure out how to do that, because we want to be able to go back and apply it to the big data set. Okay. So you need to do some of the other things that we have done before to be able to get to the, the average. Especially as we know the data set that I gave you, even the big one is not a complete set.
I right, have about one minute, uh, and somehow I managed to lose track of time. We only have 15 minutes left in the class, so I can't give you too much more. All right, raise your hand if you think you're done. All right, raise your hand if you think five more minutes would help. All right, or you think it's just a lost cause for the day. All right, uh, so let's give it five more minutes. Um, and uh, you know, if you're holding back on submitting, please do it now so I can look at the results and have a chance to process them. Uh, so, you know, go ahead and submit them um, and uh, then we'll work through either my solution or someone's solution or both uh, just before you all go.
All right, five minutes is up. Um, do me a favor and just kind of submit wherever you are, uh, just so I can kind of see the progress. Um, and while we said ungraded, um, like think of it as a participation point, you know, so just submit whatever you, ha you have. Um, it'll just give me a sense of like what you can kind of get done in 20 minutes uh, so that I, I know for the future. Um, so let me find the right window here. Okay, so uh, can anybody talk through in uh, kind of broad steps what we want to do? Uh huh. Let me see if I can follow along. Um, I am trying to find where where I I wrote that same code. Um, So, so you did something like this. So, you know, I, had, I already populated that their life. Oh, actually, I don't know if I did here, but um, so I basically have a table with the, the stop time. And, you know, it's called stop time max, right? Because I took the most or the maximum value for the stop time for any given byte, um, but not any given row. And then I just kind of added a column called life and days or life days uh, to that, which is basically what you're saying, right? Okay. So I may I may have missed a step in, in this one. Yeah. Uh, hold on one sec. Let me see where I define it. Yeah. Right, because that's when the program started. All right, well, let's put it this way. That's when the, date, the data started. So the oldest data I have is 2015. It's not, it's in the bigger data set, not in the smaller one, but yes. And that's why I hard coded that into the date calculator at the beginning. All right, so I may have done this slightly differently than you did um, because I actually did a join of the existing table of the durations along with the life because i ultimately was going somewhere else um but i think we've kind of run out of time uh but i'll try to show you really quickly so as you kind of said life and days okay um obviously this is going to be a little weird right because we only have this one month so you know it's only like that 30-day window so it's going to be they're all going to be pretty close but that's okay because what we're trying to do with this activity, right? So we're trying to test our code so that we can go and point it at the big, the big honking example. All right. So what do we do next? So we got the life and days there. Um, however, remember what we're trying to do is create something that is repeatable on the bigger data set. So we don't want to just kind of pull the average. Okay. Although we might want to, to for comparison, like for test purposes. Um, Sorry, I have a bunch more histograms in here uh, that I'm not going to show you. Um, but so then the next thing that we would probably want to do is we want to look at pulling a sample, right, from the data set. Okay, so we can do what we've kind of been doing all the way along. We're going to pull a sample of sample size, whatever that we pass in. And then we're going to take that table that we have. So I created a table, right, with which had the life and days on it. Um, and that column is called life days. And I can pull that average off of a sample, dependent, you know, as long as I keep that sample small enough, right? So I'm gonna make that function. And then I'm gonna make, well, let's, let's test the function first, always a good idea. 
although I'm pretty confident it's right, seeing as I cut and pasted it. Uh, and so that sample had uh, 453, okay, um, which may or may not be anything like the ones you did um, because it's a sample, right? But then I write another little function that is let's get 10,000 samples of that size, okay, by basically just looping back across that same function. And we get to uh, 10,000 different averages. Does it make sense so far? Does this seem familiar? All right. And then it doesn't do anything on its own without calling it first. So we're going to make. Oh, sorry, caps lock. All right, so we're going to pull 10,000 samples of 100 each against that data set. We're going to look for the overall averages. And so then we can uh, make a histogram for it so we can see how it's doing. And as expected, whoops, oh, uh, I forgot. I actually calculated the means for comparison's sake, which, you know, it's like what we said, we can do that for. This data set, we don't want to run it with the real data set because otherwise we'll be here the rest of our lives. But there's the there's the numbers we're looking for, right? So we want to make sure we can our, our histogram is going to look like that. However, with the 10,000 at size 100 samples, uh, it doesn't really, right? I mean, so oops. Let me actually let me just run this again so we have both numbers nearby. So 453.56 would be, oh, I guess this one isn't too bad. It's like right in here. Um, the, the 100 sample that I did the first time, it was uh, quite a bit more skewed, um, which is kind of to be expected, right? But then, you know, what we've done kind of for most of these is we've said, oh, let's compare some other ones. Um, and so why don't we just take a look at, I'll just do it kind of all in one go, but there's 400 and then we can do the same with kind of 900. Okay. And then I did a fancy, fancy printout of overlaying them so that you can kind of see them all together. And in theory, that should go pretty quickly. All right, so what would be a better way to figure out what our sample sizes should be? Think all the way back to last thing. Rather than this, um, why are they getting colors? Oh, here it is. Uh, so before I digress, so 900, pretty close to what we were looking for. So basically what we can say is the average lifespan for that sub data set is 453.6, which we calculated directly, but we can tell we're getting in that neighborhood with a 900 sample size. So what we should do is just run that one we have to do a little bit of pre-processing, but basically just run these three lines. Well, not that one. These two lines against our big data set, right? We'll pull 10,000 samples of size 900 against our whatever it was, 800 and some odd thousand. Um, and then we can just get to, you know, we can print it in a histogram or we can just get the data set out or whatever we want to do it. But that will give us, in theory, a, an average lifespan for a bike based purely on its duration, or, or on, on when, sorry, a lifespan for its bike based on when it disappears, okay? So, uh, and so that would, that would kind of help us. Um, what we wanna do for the sample size though is actually calculate it using the square root 
uh, method that we talked about last time. Um, and we are basically out of time, so I'm not going to talk about it too much. Um, but long story short, we can figure out what that 900 should be without having to experiment. Okay. So that's the first thing. And the really interesting thing here, right, is that the, what we're going to do for the rest of the lectures before the end of the semester is instead of taking the average duration, or sorry, the average disappearance as a way to say, when will that bike expire? Does anybody know what's wrong with that? What's wrong with saying 453? Like assuming that the data was, was representative of the overall data set. What's wrong with that 453 day, days for life? What doesn't it take into account that I pointed out at the beginning? Right, so trip durations, right? So what, we, what we're gonna do over the next couple of weeks is be able to incorporate the trip duration and, um, and the average lifespan of a bike together to try to bring those two pieces of data together and then be able to try to make a prediction about when a bike is gonna go offline. So we can say, you know, whatever we saw and there we saw like bike ID 12. So when will bike ID 12 need to come out of service, right? Cause that seems like really useful data to the people who run blue bikes, right? So, because it's more than just the duration, or sorry, it's more than just the average amount of time a bike is in use, as we saw at the very beginning, because the usage of them is wildly different, right? So there's probably some interplay there that we can do some prediction around using, and really quickly, and when you go to read the book, uh, if you haven't already, you'll see there's this uh, CKD example, but basically you can take, you know, kind of your X and Y axis and looking at this, right? Uh, you can guess where um, basically the, I think it's the gold people here are CKD positive. Um, and so can you predict where they should, where they'll land based on what blood, you know, measurements you take? Same kind of idea with the bikes, right? If we know how long it's been in service and we know how much usage it's getting, can we make a prediction about when it's going to go out of service? Okay, so this personally, the last two weeks that we've got left is basically the fun part. Uh, you know, everything we've done so far is kind of like laying the groundwork to be able to make predictive analysis, which is much more interesting than uh, looking at his, you know, kind of just historical examples. All right, let's call it there. Uh, if you are celebrating Thanksgiving, uh, have a happy Thanksgiving. If you're not celebrating Thanksgiving, have an awesome Thursday. Um, and uh, we'll see you next Tuesday.